What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Cruise News Show. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news. And uh, breaking news, I got a big pimple right here in the middle of my head, and I messed with it. You guys should know the golden rule. I'm almost 50 years old. I, I had I had pimple problems when I was a teenager. And the golden rule at high school was you never touched it because you knew it was going to inflame. And then it would be more of a, can you see it? You probably can't even see it, but I know it's there. I know it's there. That's a human thing when you know it's there. All right. The only reason I'm talking about my pimple is because for breakfast I had a big old poop sandwich. Yeah, you know what I'm going to talk about today. There's only one story that's really breaking that's worth talking about. Uh, there is a, a virus outbreak on the first cruise back in the Caribbean. And I know there's a bunch of yahoos out there. Hey, I told you, show. I told you couldn't. Have. But let's talk about what's happening on the Sea Dream 1. First of all, though, why is this even happening? I was told by countless faceless people in the comments that the whole COVID thing would go away. And, and it's still here. And it's screwing up the first cruise in the Caribbean. Now, here's the deal with the Sea Dream 1. It's a super yacht right now carrying 112 passengers and 95 crew members. Do the math on that. 95 to 112. You know that cruise is expensive if you got almost a one-to-one -one ratio between paying guests and crew members, paid crew members, but that's neither here nor there. Super Yacht made its way across the Atlantic, uh, picked up people all across the way in Europe, including the UK, and they ended up down there in Barbados. And on November the 7th, they started their first cruise around the Caribbean, going to the Grenadines, going to some other places, some other islands that probably only fancy rich people go to. Maybe not. Maybe non-fancy rich people, or maybe just... I'm getting sidetracked here because I don't want to talk about what's going on. But the Sea Dream one, not without controversy. That they started sailing and they don't they don't have a masking policy. The crew members aren't wearing masks and the guests aren't required to wear a mask. And this story blew up a couple days ago as uh, social media people on the internet, bloggers, uh, observers, cruise commentators, they started pointing out the fact that this is a res a recipe for disaster. And I, ugh, so I don't know. And then in response to that hubbub, bub, Sea Dream implemented a mask policy that went into place yesterday. And people were still saying, yeah, it's a recipe for disaster. Well, maybe. Uh, you know, we've talked about it before. You got to do all, if you look at the success stories of cruising during the pandemic, you've got to look at TUI cruises. You got to look at MSC. They've got very rigorous protocols. You know them. They're testing you at the port, daily temperature scans, social distancing, and they're making people wear masks. I mean, it's the full Monty of testing protocols. And we've covered this before also. Why, why do you need five different protocols? Well, in case one doesn't work, we know for sure that testing is not 100% accurate so you already have a, a risk vector there you already have a spot where you might miss somebody that is sick and so you got to do the other things and Sea Dream 1 not doing the masking until just recently and the crews have been going without the mask I'm not I'm not saying that there's a correlation there I'm just saying they have less protocols in place than say like MSC who's been cruising successfully now to Sea Dream's credit they cruised all summer over in Europe without the mask with no issue but again better safe than sorry and uh, yeah and now they're sorry now here's the way it went down in funky town there is a dude named gene sloan he's a big time blogger he's a very large readership he is on this cruise and he posted on his website yesterday that there was an announcement that came over the intercom the captain pronouncing that somebody had tested positive for the virus they were given the test for the virus because they were not feeling well uh, they were scheduled to be tested again on the cruise ship in addition to their rigorous at the port embarkation testing they were also testing the passengers every four days but before that happened a passenger raised their hand said i don't feel well and they have tested positive for the virus now we don't know at this point whether that's a false positive we don't know if their test in the beginning was a false negative we don't know how the covid got onto the cruise ship other than the covid sucks and it can do stuff like that and so uh, all that still left to be uh, determined 
fleshed out. More information will come out as time goes on. All the passengers were required to return to their staterooms, kind of locked down, and the ship is returning back to Barbados. The super yacht returning back to Barbados. There's no new statements out by Sea Dream. They're supposed to give information to say what's going on. I haven't seen anything new from the points guy. But yes, the cruise bubble has popped a little bit in the Caribbean. Uh, I would contend and argue that the cruise bubble wasn't as robust as some of the other cruise bubbles that have not popped. It stinks, but you got to wear a mask if you want to try to do this. You're not going to be able to cheat your way by the virus. The vi- it's, I feel like Dr. Ian Malcolm, that you know, nature finds a way. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, I could rail on all day about the no masking policy on the Sea Dream 1, but now I just think I'm a hypocrite because I don't have a you must subscribe policy to the Cruise News Show. And so I'm implementing that right now. If you're watching the show, if you're not subscribed, uh, you need to make sure that you subscribe. That's the new policy. Hit the subscribe button with the notification bell on, and that way you will be in compliance. I can't promise that it'll keep you from the COVID because we see how that's working out. But hit the subscribe button. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see if this has any ramification. But stories like this is going to, it's going to continue to hinder the resumption of cruising. Uh, we got a lot of wins in the win column of people cruising during a pandemic. I mean, thousands, tens of thousands of people cruising without any issue. It only takes one of these high-profile stories like the Sea Dream thing to derail it. Some people out there might say, well, then why are you covering it? Are you trying to ruin cruising? Absolutely not, but I do believe that it's important to talk about both the good and the bad, not just some sort of Pollyannic only talk about puppies and rainbows. I believe in puppies and rainbows, and I, I, I think there is a positive spin out of this. I think we can look at this and say, well, what did they do that they could have done better? I'm going to say they shouldn't have implemented the mask policy, you know, midway into the cruise. I think that should have been there all along, and uh, they'll continue to unpack that and figure it out. At the end of the day, they may come back and say it's a false positive, but the, the person was feeling sick. So we'll have to see what happens if there's an outbreak on this cruise ship if they're not going to sail any further than this first cruise and how it may affect cruises in the United States. I'll be glad when COVID goes away. I'm tired of it. I'm sure you are too. What do you think? Leave a comment below. Do you think the mask would have made a difference or is COVID just going to find a way? This should be interesting in the comments. The word of the day is T-Rex. T-Rex. If you're so creatively inclined, try to work T-Rex into your comment. Uh, if you enjoyed the show, please show your support by hitting the like button. This is Tony for La Lido Loca. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.